Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video I'll be showing you how to create this cool underwater lighting effect procedurally. Okay, something a little different for us today. I'm actually going to be showing you how to use shading nodes and apply them to a light source as opposed to a material. And this can give some really cool effects when combined with um, some volume scattering and a little bit of compositing later on. First, a quick look at the scene. I've basically got a very long um, plane. I've increased the height at the back, but I didn't really need to. Um, and this is because I'm going to be using volumetrics, so I just need a lot of distance behind the focal object. Speaking of which, the focal object is Suzanne. Could be any object, doesn't matter at all. And then I've got a couple of rocks in the background and a couple in the foreground. So you can see with the camera view how that all comes together. All of these objects are sitting directly on the plane. You could, of course, float them wherever you need to do that. I also have a camera uh, in position as well, ready to go. As you can see, I've got camera view already snapped to. So let's head over to the shading tab and see what we can do. I've enabled a viewport shading and I am using the cycles render engine. So the first thing that I need to do is select the spotlight itself. Now currently, um, or when you first load it, it won't have this box here, Use Nodes Selected. So make sure you've selected that. And then basically it's going to use whatever we put in here to create the light in conjunction with whatever settings we've got made in here. So the first thing that I'm actually going to do is get rid of this emission shader. And I want to press Shift A and search for a principled BSDF. The shading nodes in this light source work in exactly the same way as they do with every other shading demonstration we've done before. Now, so we can see what's happening, let's bump that all the way up to 35,000. Let's add a texture coordinate. We're using the normal output for this. Plug that into the base color. Then we want a mapping node. Chuck that in there. And we'll follow this up with a Voronoi texture. I'm going to change the spot size to 95. In fact, before I do that, let me just... Now I clicked on show cone and it's not showing. I think that's because I don't have extras selected. There we go. So that's selected the extras. Just want to make sure I've got scene lights and scene world. Yes, I have. So, 90 degrees. So it's now pointing directly at the floor. I want to change the radius from 0.25 to zero. And I'll deselect show cone. Now I've made a slight error. I shouldn't have plugged it into the base color. I need to put it into emission strength. And then I need to bring the color or the value, sorry, of this emission color all the way up. And now you can see that the light source is emitting. So basically these are gonna control the kind of patterning that goes on. And that's gonna control the strength of the light. And then the emission color is going to give us whatever color um, we select. So as you can see here, I could apply a red or any other color. Now the Voronoi texture we're going to put as 4D for dimensions. And we're going to set the scale to 10. And I want to use the distance output, not the color output. Next up, we're going to add a math node and change that to power. 
then we're going to add a color ramp and we're going to select B spline as the interpolation mode we're going to set this gray at let's say 0.1 and while we've got this selected we'll press this plus icon and it will bring us an extra one which we're going to move to position 0.75 and this first one to 0.5 and you can see it's now kind of um, giving us various different light strengths for the emission shader. Now this math node the exponent value changed to 2 and you can see now we've got that kind of um, almost like we, we've got waves at the top and the light is being scattered by those. Now just under the mapping node, let me put that up a bit, just under the mapping node we're going to put a value node and we're going to plug that into the W value because we can use that to animate this later on. Now I need to select these three and duplicate them so press shift D Connect the vector output from the mapping node to the vector input on the Voronoi texture and the value from the value to the W. Keep the scale at 10 here and the power exponent at 2 but on the color ramp we're going to get rid of this first color and change this one to black. So we've just got black and white. Now we need to mix these two color ramps together. So we control shift, right click and drag to bring us a mix RGB shader. You will only get that if you have got Node Wrangler add-on enabled. If you want it without that, just press shift A and search for mix RGB. Change this mixing factor to add and leave it set as 0.5 that just gives us some little extra details in between right that's pretty much let's just change the spot size a little as you can see when you change the spot size, spot size it kind of spreads that out a bit so you can control where it falls. I'm going to leave it at 95 and the blending basically controls how much blending there is at the edge so I set that to 1 so it gives me full blending and fall off. Right so we've got that sorted, we've got that sorted. Next up what we want to do is add some depth of field so we select the camera, go to the camera settings and at the bottom you'll see this depth of field. Select it or click on it and then choose the object, your main object from this list. If you don't see it, it's not there. But if you could want to control even more minutely where this goes, use an empty. So shift A and add an empty and then focus object on that. Set the f-stop to about 0.3 and then you'll see it will generally pick up what's what it's focusing on but things in front and things behind will be blurred. Okay, so there's a bit of cut off there. Let's go back to that spotlight and just change that beam shape a little so that it spreads out to top of the frame. There we go. That'll do. Maybe a bit more. There. I think I might have a little fiddle with these. Now I'm going to put that back.
Pushing that closer just defines a little more these white values. Right, so we've got the material on the light, but we also want to add a material to the world itself. So use this drop down here and select world. It's currently set to background. Get rid of that and search for and add a volume scatter node. Again, make sure use nodes is selected and set the density to 0.1. And make sure this is plugged into volume, not surface. And you can see there, we've now got volume scattering going on. Switch that back to object because what we're going to select now is the plane. And we're just going to select a new material And I think I'm going to set that to a darkish color, so maybe 0.35. Give it a little bit of saturation and some yellowish green, about there, I think. So that's kind of a sandy color. And then I'm going to choose a rock, add a new um, material. Set the roughness to one. And again, we'll give this a sort of grayish color. 0.3. Let's call it rock so I can use it on the others. Select another rock. And another. And which one haven't I done? This one. Rock. So if I select the plane again, I can give this a name of riverbed. Okay, so um, I want to select the spotlight again because I want to adjust the actual color um, because underwater you would have some colorization of the beams or the light and that comes under this emission color here. So we've got the value set to one. Let's increase the saturation a bit. And then let's find us a nice shade of blue. I think that'll do. Right, so we want to now just start um, giving this this scene a little bit more oomph. So we're going to go into the compositive, compositing tab. Make sure again to select use nodes. Drag the composite output over. Search for the viewer node and add that. And drag this image output into the image input in the viewer. Now nothing will appear just yet. What we're going to do is actually go ahead and render this scene very quickly. Okay, so now that I've rendered that, I'm going to close that down and come back here. And that's now showed up in our render layers and we're using the viewer so we'll see it. If you don't have that selected, you'll just see black. Uh, right, so next up we want to add um, some more contrast so we'll search for the brightness contrast node and plug that in make sure you're always making sure both of those are connected and we're going to set the brightness to one and the contrast to two and a half this will depend on your scene obviously two and a half no i'm going to set it to five for this one then we're going to add a denoising node. And we'll set this to fast. And that's all we need to do for renders or for compositing. So now we can go ahead again and render this out.
And there you go. When it comes to the end, it applies that new filter and it only took an additional one second. So it's not too bad. Um, you can, of course, change this around and do whatever you fancy. And I mentioned about animating earlier. So like I say, if you watch up here, if I move this value, those light rays and the um, light catching on the floor or the surfaces animates, which is perfect. So you can use that to be your value to animate that light effect. Um, I think that's about it. So if you've enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.